All righty. This will be a part of 1.5, so I'll title it 1.5, Uses and Misuses of Statistics. So uses and misuses of statistics. So these are just uh, general guidelines of statistical studies. All right. The first one, first step you want to do is formulate the purpose of the study. So when you are trying to do your own statistical study, you want to formulate a purpose for the study. So formulate If you're just trying to compare the lunch food, that would be your purpose. Like, how does everyone like the lunch food? Maybe you want to try to change it or fight to keep it the same, whatever it might be. The second thing you want to do is identify the variables of study. So these will be your independent and dependent type of variables where maybe you are identifying the fact that if I say something encouraging, will that make you do something longer? If you're talking about the plank situation, whatever it is, just identify, identify the variables. The third thing you need to do is define the population. Is the entire population the student body? Is it the people that show up to the gym membership? Um, is it people in Texas? Define your entire population that you're doing the study for. So define the population. The fourth thing, decide what sampling method you will use to collect the data. We all know random sample is the best, but might not always be feasible. So figure out what type of sampling you're going to do. Maybe you just do a convenience sample where you're just grabbing people out in the hallway. Not always the best. Oh, no, not defined. Decide. So decide what sampling methods you will use to collect the data. Right. The fifth thing, once you've done all this work on preparing for it, now go collect the data. Go out and give the surveys, ask the questions. Maybe you're just doing an observational study, so you're just observing people, being a little stalkerish, whatever the case might be. We might, we might. After you've collected the data, now you want to summarize the data and perform any statistical calculations needed. So this is now we're going to summarize the data and perform any statistical calculation. And I'll teach you how to do those as we progress through this book. Once you've done this, the very last thing you do is interpret your results. And when you interpret the results, try to keep it factual. What are you seeing with your study? If you are seeing that 60% of females don't like the school food, don't claim that females love the school food, like, or say majority, right? So you want to state the facts. You could either say a majority of females don't like it, or if it's the reverse, maybe you could say the, that males are the ones that 
really like it if they're saying yes or whatever the factual interpretation is. Try not to put your own opinion. If you hate the school food or you love the school food, keep that out. Just, just look at your evidence. And that is really hard to do, um, but that is the to avoid the um, bias situation. And then if we jump into the last of this packet to finish it up, objective seven was to explain how statistics can be used and misused. Uh, so statistical studies are sometimes reported in a way to sell products that do not work, prove something that the study did not address. Um, besides statistical studies do not really prove anything, rather they prove evidence to support or not support the premise or in gen, injured, engender, fear, shock, or outrage people, right? So even though the results of a uh, statistical studies are reported, does not mean the results are reliable. Uh, a couple of things on what could gone wrong is the sample may have been too small. If I am comparing the how people like the food here, and I only judge 10 out of the 500, and I'm going to make those 10 people my entire sample, uh, the studies could definitely lean one way or the other. Now, that's not saying that it might come out perfect with a small sample, but doesn't always, that could be a misuse there. So sometimes the sample is too small. Subjects may not have been selected randomly. If I go into the cafeteria and I'm only picking people that brought their lunch to school, right? I might not randomly do it. I'm selecting because I want a, a certain response out. If I see someone that brought their lunch, I'm thinking they don't like the school lunch, so I'm going to survey them. Or vice versa, I'm only going to survey people that finish their food, right? Because I'm like, all right, you finish your food, you must like it, right? So it might not be random. So you want to keep it random to get away from that misuse. And then the results may be misinterpreted. So like I was saying earlier, I could have uh, said that 60% of the kids didn't like the food. Um, so I might misinterpret that and say, um, majority of the school likes the food, right? And that's not the interpretation that should have been written because 60 is not the, uh, is the majority. So the results may be misinterpreted on purpose. Uh, sometimes it can be on accident, like maybe they just mi misread what they were observing. Uh, but most of the time it's on purpose because they have an agenda. They either want new school food or they want you to vote a certain way on the next election or they want you to see something. So you blame something on something else. Right. So if they go, you know, the economy's doing poorly, they're saying, oh, it's because of X, Y, Z. Right. Because we did a study that affected these people. So now it says 90 percent of people are being affected out of this hundred sample space for the entire population. But it's really probably just those folks. Right. So you just got to watch out for those misinterpretations never believes it is this well unless you see their study like you would need to go all right if you're saying 57 percent of people like this what is your population what was your sample size how did you select your people was it random um what was your focus? What were your variables on you interpreting this? So those are the things you need. Like once you have all of those, then you can interpret the same thing they are. Or you'll be like, you're a liar. <laughs> it's, it, obviously, it said this, and you push some numbers a different direction. Because uh, a lot of times people, too, when they look at your surveys, if they don't like your answers, that didn't exist. And now we're pushing the data somewhere else. So yeah, watch out for that. So Use of poor sampling methods. Uh, the sample may not be large enough, right? So we could do 10 out of 500. That would definitely not be large enough. Uh, the participants may be volunteers, perhaps those with strong feelings for or against the premise with a built-in bias. So if I just had a booth and I was like, opinion on school food, you're going to have two types of people show up, people that love it and people that hate it. 
You're not going to really have anyone in between that's like, eh, I could go either way with it. You're going to have a strong biased opinion if you're just getting volunteers. Uh, certain sections of the population, such as those who work or the elderly, may have been um, systematically excluded. Uh, so maybe I asked just during a lunch, who's typically missing an a lunch? girls athletics right so that could be a big part that i just excluded they did not have um a uh, opportunity to say anything and they could have a big opinion or basically anyone in b lunch too right uh so not everyone had an opportunity to say something and again the biggest one is just that convenient sampling may have been used such as intact uh, classrooms so maybe i just go into one classroom ask all their opinions and then that's my observation and it not be entirely true. So those are some poor sampling methods. So ambiguous averages, uh, several values, including the value that occurs most often, uh, the middle value of an ordered list, the arithmetic average or the mid range could be reported as the average or typical value, uh, the average that lends the most evidence and support of the researcher's position is likely to be reported. So we know how to find an average. You add them all up, divide by however many you have, and that's the true average. But they could do something different, and maybe they find the range. So like if you had a poll from a 1 to 100, then you're like, oh, well, the range was like 99. So that means they really like it. Or the mid-range, and you're trying to add the 2 and divide by 2, and you're like, well, that was a 56. That means they don't like it. So they're misusing some calculations to push their agenda left or right or one way or the other they're liars statisticians are the best <laughs> that's because it's, it's statistics is so opinionated the only way you can avoid any type of biased opinions is if you pull the entire population that you're trying to do a study on other than that, there's going to be someone that didn't have a voice. Therefore, it's not going to be a full interpretation. Now, if you are only sampling Mr. Smith's room, well, I can easily sample seven of y'all. Well, sorry, six of y'all. Well, today, five of y'all, right? And only have one person out, right? So so a detached statistics is a – oh, well, that's, that's what goes in the blank here. So a detached statistic, detached – Statistics is one in which no comparison is made. So I might say 95% of dentists recommend brand A toothpaste, all right? But what you're not seeing is, is dentists might have also said brand A, B, and D we would recommend. So we were just pinpointing brand A, which supports us. Dentists said it, so therefore we can put it in there. But we don't know the full story. They could have, like I said, they could have been advertising, hey, use one of these four. But because we were in there, we're discluding everywhere else. So that's what they're saying here. So this brand is recommended instead of what brand or do the dentist recommend several brands, including brand A. Uh, this one here, cookie B has fewer calories. Fewer than what it was last week. Uh, fewer than a sugar cookie, if mine's like a diet cookie. Like, what are we comparing it to when we say cookie B has fewer calories, right? Am I judging an Oreo that's this big to a crumble cookie that's like this big and it feeds four, right? You know, so there's some misguidance there. So it might be truthful, but it's misguided. Some detached statistics, they didn't give you all of what was being um, tested there. You know, right? Learning a lot. Professional liars with math. <laughs> Other types of misuses um, would be implied connections. So implied connections. Uh, it's use of words such as may help. Uh, misleading graphs. Oh, these are a big one too. So I could say, um, let's say I want to say that uh, people really don't like the food here. 
And what I'll put is I'll put a little chart here. And right here, hypothetically, maybe this represents like 20%, right? And I go, man, look at how many people don't like the food. It was only 20% of it. And if I want to go the other way with it, here's my 20%. And I can be like, yeah, not many people don't like the food, right? I could misuse the graph to interpret. I'm putting the factual stuff, but now I'm I'm showing it in a misinterpreted way, right? Uh, then you see this a lot. Like they love these bar charts and stuff like that. You really can't get that wrong. Well, you can in a sense with like a pie chart. I love these pie charts where this is like, this is what people said. It's like, this is no. And you're thinking, oh, well, this means yes. But really, they have a small print where they said, this is also no. Right? <laughs> so wh whatever the situation might be, they can misuse all kinds of different graphs. Uh, I see that a lot in uh, on Facebook. And anyways, and then, then faculty survey questions and basically questions how they're phrased. And it could be a phrase that is um, in a way to influence the way the answer should be. Oh, like scale one to ten. <laughs> Well, I don't look like the guy smiling, so I must be at a seven or whatever. Yeah. So here's a big question here. And then you'll see this all over the news. And, I, and again, I stay political because I feel like that's the biggest connection. But they'll be like, do you support abortions? And depending on your answer, like, oh, you must be a Democrat or Republican. Bam, done. That's your platform. Bam. And there was like so much more to it, but it was the way the question was leading. Do you support, you know, murderers and stuff like that? And you're like, well, no. Okay, good. Do you must not support the death penalty? Uh, well, to, it was, but again, it was all how the question was worded. And so what will happen is, is they'll word those questions out in surveys and they'll come out. Yeah, 97% of people don't support the de uh, death penalty. But the question was, do you support murder? <laughs> like, and you're like, the connection here was misused. So that's another type of example. So that's all kinds of different things. Uh, that last part there with computers and calculators, we'll probably use maybe a mixture of both where we use Google Sheets and the Inspires to help us like analyze data so we can do a box and whiskers and stuff like that. And I'll go through that when we get to that point. I will try to avoid as much uh, technology as I can. Then you might not have that accessible so easily at home, right? Any questions on chapter one? So a lot of vocabulary there, um, but that pretty much wraps it up.